Here's a picture I shot from the Appalachian Trail. Ain't it beautiful? People have often described the Appalachian Trail as being inspiring, awesome, fantastic, and spiritually uplifting. And yeah, I completely agree. It is all of those things. And perhaps because it is all of those things, the Appalachian Trail tends to attract some hikers who have very little or no backpacking experience. And I know this because I've encountered people on the Appalachian Trail who said they'd never been backpacking before. And I've also talked to a number of people with no backpacking experience who plan to hike on the Appalachian Trail. Some of these people are not there for a short visit. They intend to hike long distances, hundreds of miles, perhaps the entire trail. I am making this video because there are people with very little backpacking experience who want to take on the AT and I would like to do my bit to help them out to make their experience enjoyable and successful. Now it's true that there's one thing new AT hikers should be concerned about that they really don't seem to think about much at all. If they do worry about the Appalachian Trail, they tend to worry about things like snakes, like poisonous snakes, like bears, like the occasional boulder that looks like it might fall down and crush them. And yes, they can encounter these things on the Appalachian Trail, but they will encounter them very infrequently. The thing that I want to talk about is something that they will be encountering almost nonstop, and that is the mountains on the Appalachian Trail. If you don't know what the Appalachian Trail is, it is a single trail about 2,180 miles long, more or less, that runs from Georgia to Maine. What we're looking at here is a photo of a 3D map of the AT at the Appalachian Trail Conservancy Headquarters at Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. You'll notice the light areas running from left to right in the photo on this 3D map. And those light areas are the tops of the Appalachian Mountains. The AT runs along the tops of many Appalachian Mountains. And that is what the Appalachian Trail is really about. Everything else about the Appalachian Trail, including those snakes and bears, is really just minor incidental stuff. Those who hike on the AT will be dealing with the Appalachian Mountains with almost every step. They will be either going uphill or downhill at least 90% of the time. Oftentimes those climbs or descents are steep and many many times those climbs and descents will cover a great deal of elevation. There are flat areas on the AT but they are few and far between. I have read that if a hiker covers the entire Appalachian Trail that hiker will, will climb and descend something like 500,000 feet of elevation. That isn't going to mean much if you only want to hike a day or two or three on the Appalachian Trail. It's not going to mean that much if you're going to day hike on the Appalachian Trail. And those kinds of things are perfectly acceptable uses of the AT. And you can have fun doing them. Not only that, later on I will give you some ideas on how you can enjoy the AT without having to camp on the trail at all. But... Other people are determined to walk hundreds of miles on the Appalachian Trail, and when that happens, those hills become a test of endurance. If a hiker completes the entire AT in six months, that would mean climbing up and down something like 2,000 or 2,500 feet a day in elevation on average. And to accomplish the completion of the AT in 150 days, they are going to have to average at least 15 miles a day. That is a relentless grind of walking, climbing up high, and then going down the other side. Here's another detail. A lot of people think all of the AT looks like this. Nice, ain't it? It's a pretty little grassy trail. But the reality is a lot of the AT looks instead like this. Nothing but big rocks like an empty creek bed. Here's a spot where the trail goes over a pile of rocks 15 feet high. In some places, you'll have to walk all day on rocks like this. Now, I understand from first-hand experience, of course, that the physical challenge of the Appalachian Trail is certainly part of the appeal. If somebody is determined to carry a 50-pound pack on the AT, far be it from me to argue I'm not here to spoil anyone's fun. But, I have to tell you, I have run into hikers of all ages on the AT, all ages with injured knees, injured ankles, and injured feet. 
and I have run into young hikers moving at a snail's pace on the AT. Not only are the hills a physical challenge, they also are a mental challenge. More than once, I have seen a strong, healthy hiker throw up their hands on the AT, deciding they want to get off the damn thing as fast as they can, at least temporarily, or slow their pace down to only a few miles a day. Other people throw in the towel almost immediately. I gave a lot of advice to one guy who gave up and went home after four days. I don't think he completely understood what I was trying to tell him about the AT. If you want to walk hundreds of miles on the AT, you have to be as strong as you can manage. Now certainly some new Appalachian Trail hikers have experience elsewhere carrying heavy pack long distance up and down over significant elevations and I am sure those people will have no problem with the AT. There are also people who are very young, very strong, very fit and have the mental attitude that they can put up with anything and those people also are a very good bet for not having any problem on the AT. And then of course there are people who go to the AT with little or no previous backpacking experience. If we are concerned about endurance, we will have an advantage if we keep the weight of our pack as light as we can manage. A lighter load is easier to carry and that's simple physics. I know this is uh, something that a lot of novices don't want to think about or hear about and I'm sure my friend who quit after four days probably didn't want to think about it too much either. I have met many young hikers who are hiking 25 or 30 miles a day, which is a considerable accomplishment on the AT. Every one of these young hikers that I encountered traveling these distances was carrying a light pack. Anyone I met with a heavy pack was moving a lot slower. I have hiked about 650 miles on the Appalachian Trail in sections. I did this in the summer or the fall. That means I would hike a week or two at a time, then I'd go home, then I'd come back later when I could and I'd hike some more. This gave me the advantage of changing things between trips to make hiking easier. I will tell you what I did to give you some example of things that will work, some things that helped me, and some things that made traveling easier. My pack weighed 35 pounds on my first Appalachian Trail trip and I decided I clearly would have an easier time if the pack was lighter. Ultimately, I got my pack down to about 25 pounds grand total. How did I do this? Basically, I, it's very simple. I did it by carefully selecting some critical pieces of gear. I did it mainly by using a pack, a backpack that weighed 20 ounces. I used a sleeping bag that weighed one pound. I used a tarp tent that weighed one pound. I used a sleeping pad that weighed nine ounces and I used a cook stove that weighed three ounces and a cook pot that weighed four ounces. That's a grand total of about four pounds. Other than that, I was like anyone else. I carried spare clothes and I carried plenty of food and water. And if you're on the AT, my advice is do not skimp on food and water. Many people have strong opinions about outdoor gear and some folks might complain that light gear is easily damaged. They would have a point if we drag our pack over rocks and barbed wire or if we pull our tent and sleeping bag through underbrush and thorn bushes. If we can avoid that, the gear is durable on the AT. It's also easy to think that one needs heavy gear to be comfortable in camp. Yet based on what I've seen and what I've experienced, camp is not the problem on the AT. The real problem instead is covering long distances up and down those hills. I visit outdoor stores all the time and when I visit those stores I don't see the kind of gear I would be looking for if I had to re-equip myself for the AT. Instead most of the gear I see is too heavy for my tastes. My experience is that one is going to have to search the internet to find lighter gear. Now needless to say we can talk in great detail about gear for the Appalachian Trail, techniques, tips and attitude and I will be posting other videos on all of these topics. Please check my channel if you don't want to miss anything. Let's talk about training for the AT. My advice is do a lot of walking as fast as you can on the biggest hills you can find. Remember those rocks I mentioned earlier? It's not enough to just train your leg muscles, your feet and ankles have to be in shape too. If you go to a gym, 
I would suggest using the Stairmaster and doing a lot of calf raises. One detail is the mountains and climbs on the Appalachian Trail tend to be higher and more strenuous at the northern and southern ends of the AT. If you want to take a fairly short hike, you could cross Maryland on the AT in a few days and the hills are not very bad there. The Appalachian Trail runs about 90 miles through the Shenandoah National Park in Virginia and the hills aren't too bad there either. Another option is day hiking. The Shenandoah National Park has plenty of parking lots and spaces where you can car camp. It's also easy to do an AT overnighter in the park. There also are many other trails in the park and many national parks are filled with other great trails. The AT Conservancy sells guidebooks that list parking areas along the entire trail. I put a link in the description to help you find those guidebooks. If you have the guidebook for your area, you can use it to plan day hikes and overnighters on the AT. I'd like to thank you for watching and I guarantee you that no matter what kind of hike you take on the Appalachian Trail, it will be an experience you'll never forget.